and very importantly the wireless networking the wireless communication right we know that in sensor networks the communication can take place only through wireless wireless link right wireless communication is only take place in wireless sensor nodes right in that case very importantly you have to understand whenever we transmit any particular signal right every sensor node will have a radio to communicate with its neighbors to transmit signals to receive signals to receive information and all those things correct and when I, when it speaks about all of communication and that is wireless communication definitely attenuation will take place what is attenuation attenuation will take place attenuation is loss in signal strength right there will be reduction in signal strength whenever you transmit some signal wirelessly right and it has to transmit through a medium that is through air and also if there is any obstacle it has to overcome that particular obstacle and you should be able to receive the signals correct right and definitely there will be a signal reduce in signal strength right that is called as attenuation right and that attenuation that reduce in signal strength is directly can be related like this right we can write it like this way right that is the received power is directly proportional to transmission power right but it is inversely proportional to distance right that is as the distance increases there will be a reduced reduction in the received power right this is very important and similarly as the distance increases as distance increases definitely the transmission power required will also will increase right when the distance between the sensor and the base station for example in the sense this is sensor and this is base station this is very close right so you'll require only less transmission power but if it if this distance becomes larger right now this requires more transmission power correct so the distance whenever the distance between the sensor node and the base station right the central node increases then definitely what will happen there will be an increase in transmission power right that is record transmission power will be more right in that case what you can do is instead of uh, going for more transmission power if you require more transmission power then what will happen the energy will reduce right in that case we will go for multi hop communication right you not understand what is multi hop communication there is another video i have posted just go and watch that particular video right uh, in sensor networks you will have there will be both single hop communication and multi hop communication right in this case we need multi hop communication because we can have more sensors between base station and the sensors okay now what will happen this sensor will act as a relay right instead of directly transmitting it to to this base station we can transfer the data to this particular node and this node will transfer this particular data right and now the transmission power required will be very less right so we can use multi hop communication in that case right and also there are lot of other techniques which is very important to reduce the energy right that is uh, as i said here uh, the transmission power required right for whenever you using relay nodes the, the transmission power required will be very less right similarly each and every node follow different techniques to reduce the energy right that is it, it will have different duty cycles what is duty cycles in order to reduce the energy consumption it, it follows its own cycle right for example some nodes will not be active every time right it will be active only when it is transporting data and what it will happen is it will it will after transporting data it will go to the sleep mode right and if it goes to sleep mode it will not be active right and once again whenever there is need for communication it will become active right so every sensor node will have its own duty cycle right in that case it can preserve energy right and in, there will be a lot of techniques for that that is uh, when when the sensor node has to wake up or when it has to go to sleep node there are different techniques for it right and very important technique is wake up on demand right and another thing is act adaptive duty cycling all this we have to explain in wireless networking okay what is wake up on demand wake up on demand in the sense right the sensor node it's not only going to the sleep mode but it should be aware when should get wake up right so for example if this particular sensor 
uh, is going to sleep more, right? It should be able to wake up at the correct time, right? In that case, this particular sensor will have two radios. One is lower energy radio and higher energy radio. Low energy radio, radio low energy radio is required when to receive the signal, uh, to receive the wake up signal. Whenever it receives the wake up signal, it has to wake up, right? And then another, another thing is higher energy radio where it will be active to transmit data for that uh, during that uh, awakening time, right? Whenever it is active, it has to transmit data, right? And this low energy radio is only used to receive the wake up signals, correct? This is one particular technique. Another particular technique is adaptive duty cycling. What is adaptive duty cycling? For example, if you have 50 nodes, 50 sensor nodes, right? Not all the 50 nodes will go to the sleep mode, right? So it, it is designed in such a way that 20 nodes will be active and 30 nodes will be sleep mode, right? And then again, this 20 nodes will become go to sleep mode and then 30 nodes will be active, right? That is known as adaptive duty cycling. All this is done to preserve energy, right? Right? And this is about wireless networking, an important challenge in WSN, right? And predominantly, whenever you use multi-hop communication, right? Definitely, you have one particular uh, thing that is, it increases the overhead. That is, when you have multi-path for any particular transmission, right? So, there will be a lot of energy that can be wasted. Their overhead can be increased, right? So, the designers has to take care of that particular challenge as well, right? And that is why we have all these techniques to overcome that particular overhead, right? And... Next one is decentralized management. So decentralized management, this is another important challenge, right, in WSN, where we can follow decentralized management whenever it is applicable. The designers can follow decentralized management, right? First, what is centralized management? For example, if you have a lot of sensors like this, right, a lot of sensors like this, all the sensors, you have one particular base station, correct? So the data from these sensors has to reach this particular base station, correct? And then, and then the base station will transfer the data to the other sensor node, right? That is how it works, correct? Right. From one sensor network to another sensor network, it has to be done only through the base station. Again, so uh, every operation will be depending upon this base station, correct? Right. So that is called a centralized algorithm, right? And for centralized algorithm, once again, there will be a lot of techniques involved, right? The time delay will be more. Right, because all the information has to be collected by the base station. Right, it has to collect information from all the sensor nodes, from all the sensor nodes, and then only it can take the decision. Right, and then only it can process the data. Right, so it will be time delay. Right, and for that time delay, overhead will be more, will be more, and more energy can be consumed. Right, and in order to overcome that, we can go for decentralized algorithm. What is decentralized algorithm? Right. Instead of going for base station for each and every every process, right? The, these sensor nodes can decide locally, right? With, with the neighbors, it can decide locally and solve the problem, right? That is called as decentralized algorithm, right? For example, we will take routing, routing, so that you can understand what is centralized and decentralized solution, right? For example, if you take routing, right, in order to create a routing table for each and every nodes, right, if it is a centralized approach, the base station wanted us to do, it has to collect the routing information from all these sensor nodes, right, and then from one sensor to other sensor, it has to create routing table for all these sensor nodes, right, and then it has to process the information, what is the shortest path, it has to find out all the information, and then it has to send those information to each and every nodes, right, Really, it will be time consuming and more energy will be taken, right? Instead of that, for example, if these sensor not, nodes alone, right? If these sensor nodes alone create a particular network, right? Uh, just create a routing table, a local routing table, so that it can enable to optimize itself and it can start communicating, right? That is decentralized solution. But there will be one particular challenge here. You will not be having an optimum solution for decentralized thing, right? We can able to reduce the overhead, and we can able to reduce the energy, right? But the optimal solution sometimes will not be able to achieve because, right, there can be 
there can be some issues because it, it is considered only with fewer nodes. The decision is taken only with the local nodes, right? So that only local routing will be taking place. That is one important challenge in decentralized solution, right? So you want to explain about decentralized management. What are the challenges in it as well, right? And design constraints, right? So so far we have seen different challenges and very important challenges. Design constraint, constraint. The designer, what is the aim of any designer in WWS network, right? They have to create a smaller, cheaper, and efficient devices, correct? Right? So normally any devices, any any designers will have this particular objective, correct? But in sensor networks, WSN, it is it is very, very important that right the network has to be very efficient, right? Provided we have a lot of challenges because we will not be able to use sophisticated protocols, sophisticated hardware, right? We will not be able to use any sophisticated devices for a particular application, right? That's because, right, it requires only lesser energy, right? Whatever device or whatever uh, application which is deployed for, for which uh, WSN is deployed, right? Energy plays a very vital role, right? And apart from energy, right, apart from energy, there will be some application where you will definitely need GPS, right? GPS, just for an example I'm telling, right? But you will not be able to easily integrate the GPS with the WSN because it will start consuming more energy, right? So now the designer has to work out in such a way that it has that the application has to work very effectively without without connecting GPS, right? So that is one another important challenge, right? But in some cases, right, we have to compromise energy depending upon the application, depending upon the need. We have to compromise. Uh, this particular thing where if you want to integrate such devices, you have to definitely do it, right? But normally in wireless sensor networks, you will have lower energy, right? Lower energy is very, very important. And very importantly, there will be only limited hardware features, right? As I said, you will not be able to use sophisticated hardware, right? So there will be a resource constraint in hardware and as well as in, in techniques, in protocols as well. For example, even if you take computer networks, right, uh, if you, there will be a lot of routing problems, but right now, you have a lot of sophisticated algorithms to overcome those particular routing problems, but you cannot able to use those routing algorithms here in WSN because it will consume more energy, right, and here in the sensor nodes is very, 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 very small, right, and its computational speed is also very small. In that case, definitely, right, we will not be able to use those hardwares, right, those hardwares and the energy is also very important, right. So with all those constraints, right, the limited hardware features and GPS not able to use and it is resource constraint hardware and energy consumption, right, with all this thing, the greatest challenge is they have to provide an efficient WSN devices or WSN networks, right. This is the greatest challenge in design. Right, and when it comes to security, as I said, definitely the WSN will have security threats. Right, that is in uh, in military applications. Whenever you deploy uh, a sensor network to monitor battlefield or to for intrusion detection, definitely there will be a lot of threat attacks. Most of the attacks, most common attacks, is denial of service. Right, uh, it it denies the service. That is. Some attack will makes the WSN right to work in a different way. It will not work uh, for what it is designed. It will give false information, right? Uh, like that. That is called as denial of service. And similarly, and another common attack is jamming attack. Jamming attack can also can lead to denial of service. Jamming attack is providing high frequency signal, right? And and destroying the low frequency signal, uh, lower energy signal, right? Jamming it completely. Right, that is also provide that will also lead to denial of service. So there will be a lot of security attacks as well, and the designer has to create a WSN in such a way that it has to overcome this security security attacks. Even though it it it, it uh, undergo the security attacks, it has to overcome that particular attack. Right, and apart from this, we have other challenges as well. That is uh, very important challenges. WSN can also be uh, created or placed on objects which is moving, right? On a moving car 
right or in any particular application robots that will be continuously moving in that case right in that case you'll have very uh, high degree of challenge that's because if the object is moving then it, the sensor has to adapt accordingly right it has to change its topology it has to change its con configurations very frequently right and there will be a lot of hardware it has to uh, cope up with those hardware sometimes right different hardware will be connected to the WSN so WSN the sensor node has to cope up with all those hardware right so these are the other challenges and very importantly right now if you take computer networks you have solution standardized solution for all the problems in computer networks but for WSN it right now it's emerging a lot of standardization is emerging and it is very important to we have to provide a standardization for WSN to solve all these problems right so today what we have seen is we have seen about challenges of WSN right as I said this is very very important question right and Apart from the challenges, you have also know about the difference between traditional network and wireless sensor networks, right? So we have already seen this, but this is in more detail, right? Right now, you would have got a clear picture about, about the challenges of WSN. So what is the limitation of WSN you'll be able to understand, correct? So the first thing is in traditional network, it will be morely uh, designed for uh, general purpose design that is it can support many applications but here it is for one specific application right and here the main constraint here is performance and latencies energy will not be a problem but here in WSN energy plays a very vital role that is the main constraint here right and networks and are designed engineered according to plans but here it is ad hoc nature right without planning we have to deploy these sensors right and devices and networks in control and mild environments, right? Because we we'll create computer networks or other networks only in the living areas, correct? Right? But here it will be mostly in harsh environments, right? In glaciers, volcanoes, like that, right? And similarly, maintenance and repair are common, right? But here that is that is difficult and even sometimes it is impossible, right? And component failure is also addressed, right? But here sometimes component failures cannot be addressed, right? As I said, in battlefield, you will not be able to go ahead and repair those sensors, correct? And apart from that, global network knowledge is typically feasible, centralized management is possible, okay? And here, most of this localized without the central manager, right? As I said, decentralized management has to take place in WSN, right? Even though there, there is centralized management, in most of the cases, decentralized management will work, correct? Right, so these are this is this is the difference between traditional networks and wireless sensor networks. Right, so I believe this video will be very useful, and this is about challenges of WSN. Right, and we will see a lot of information about WSN in this particular playlist. So go through all those videos. Okay, thank you, students. Thank you, students. Thank you for watching. Kandipa in the video, Ongal Kalar ko useful ay rakho number. Subscribe Passionate Professor and keep learning. Thank you very much.